So, welcome to another edition of Through My Eyes. It's been a long time since I have recorded any of these. And, um, so I thought I'd go ahead and do another one that might be of interest to some of you, both blind and sighted. Um, so, basically, today I'm going to demonstrate to you how a blind person, such as myself, can use an iPhone, fourth generation or later, straight out of the box. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, those of you who have watched this podcast before will recall that I had demonstrated another uh, phone a while back and how I use it as a blind person. If you recall, I, uh, that was called the Nokia 6620, and it was one of the first, if not the first, cell phone to become accessible to blind people uh, through speech software. However, in order to make the phone accessible, you had to go out and buy a whole separate piece of speech software to install onto the phone with a little card thing that in and of itself was over two hundred dollars. And so the phone was by no means accessible immediately right you know, out of the box. However, Apple has done wonders for people with disabilities in their products, especially recently. They've especially done wonders in pioneering the ability for blind people uh, to access touch screens. And um, now, I must uh, admit that blind folks had been crying foul for m several years before that, before Apple actually did put accessibility within their phones, but um, they finally did. And, um, excuse me, <clears throat> it's been great. Um, now, what, as I imply, what's awesome about the iPhone, as opposed to any of the other phones, as I know of, that are right off the market today, is that when a blind person buys an iPhone, he or she can access the accessibility right out of the box. So, you know, they can use it right out of the box when they buy it, as opposed to, say, like I said, the Nokia 6620, where you had to buy a separate piece of software to access it. Now, if you are a blind person or know a blind person, uh, just to kind of give you some helpful advice on this, on how to access um, speech, uh, the speech on an iPhone 4 or later, I believe, I think 4 is the earliest that has voiceover, as I recall. If that's not true, if there's an earlier version, someone please let me know. But I think 4 is the latest. So if you get an iPhone 4 later, as I was saying, uh, a blind person can access the voiceover or the speech on that iPhone independently now. Uh, well, uh, pardon me, the voiceover was on the iPhone 4, but uh, a blind person can access voiceover independently without any sighted assistance on the iPhone 5 or later, because on the iPhone 5 or later, Siri has now been given the capability to access various accessibility features such as voiceover or high contrast and, and that, those kinds of things. Um, and so all you have to do is hold in the home key until you, um, excuse me, until you bring up Siri, you hear a little beep sound, and then you say, turn on voiceover to turn it on, or turn off voiceover to turn it off. Um, and so that's how it works. Now, I already have voiceover on this iPhone. Hope you guys will be able to see somewhat of what's on the screen on this. Um, I don't know how easily it'll be seen on camera, but here's my iPhone. Got a nifty little otter box on it. Wild colors, <coughs> as I, as you figured I might have, being the eccentric individual that I am, I admit. Um, so there's my iPhone. Like I said, I already have voiceover enabled, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. Um, I'm hoping voiceover is loud enough for you guys to hear and slow enough for you guys to hear. So I'm going to turn it on. So you might have heard it said 534. Um, I'm going to turn the volume up a little bit on this. So hold on one second. Okay, I think that's loud enough. So you heard when I first turned it on, it said 534. So it announces the time initially uh, through voiceover. It, it'll tell you what time, you know, that time on the screen. And it just timed out. But I'm going to turn it on again. You'll see my little Hawaii picture. This is where we were a couple of years ago in, on uh, Waikiki, so outside of our window. So what I'm going to do here in a minute is I'm going to 
move my finger to the bottom of the screen because um, I know that the unlock, just from experience, I know that the unlock part of it is going to be close to the bottom of the screen. So I'm going to move my finger around until I hear a little thing that says slide to unlock. So I'm going to turn it back on. 5.35 p.m. So unlock, right? And so I'm going to double tap that to make it unlock. You see my icons Hello. came up there? Saturday, and it Saturday, announced Saturday. my calendar, and it said double tap to open, because my right now what's called my focus is on my calendar uh, icon. So if I double tap, if I double tapped anywhere on the screen right now, my calendar would come up. And so, you know, you can, I'll, as I'll show you, you can move around the screen, and it'll tell me whatever is under my finger, whatever icon's under my finger as I move on, around the screen. So let me move around the screen a little bit. App Store. App Store. Double tap to open games folder. Games apps. folder. Double tap to open. So and it always says double tap to open after. Now that double tap to open thing is what's called a hint. And so on in voiceover settings under general accessibility, uh, you can um, set hints to on. And that basically means that after it announces what's under your finger, it'll give you a hint about how to access it. So this is good for people who are new to voiceover. Uh, it's good if you download a new app and you're not familiar with certain ways to access certain functions in you know, an accessible way, uh, you can get hints. So I always keep them on because some apps I'm not, you know, are not really intuitive when it comes to accessing certain elements with VoiceOver you know, accessibly. So I'm going to give you some examples. I'm going to bring up, uh, what should I bring up? My music. Here, let's see where do I have that. Actually, what I do is I, I usually just do a quick double tap and bring up the app switcher because it makes it quicker and easier to find the music. But I'm going to see where I can find it on this screen uh, because that's what most people do. And that's what's most familiar, familiar to sighted folks, I think, too. And so, like I said, you can move around the screen and it'll, it'll announce anything that's under your finger. But to make finding an object quicker on your screen, say if you're not exactly sure where something is or there's, you know, icons are not all in a row like they are here if you're in another app, what you do is you put your finger maybe where you think it is, right? So I'll put my finger here. Map. So maps. And so now my focus is on maps. In order to go to the next item after the item that I put my finger on for it to read it, all I do is swipe to the right. So I'm going to just swipe to the right. Weather. It'll go back to my weather. That's the next, uh, that's the next item. So passbook. Passbook. Notes. notes. Reminders. Notice it said 20 new items on, on Twitter, and so it announces what badges are up there and how many new items you have. So apparently my music is somewhere. And so in order to get to the next screen, I'm going to uh, swipe um, left with three fingers. Again, vo vo on a voiceover. So it goes to the next page and focuses on Ariadne GPS. On voiceover, as I was saying, uh, the gestures change a little bit as to how you interact with, it, with your touch screen. It makes sense, right? Because you're interacting with it non-visually. And so in order to swipe, in order to go to the next screen, you have to swipe this way with three fingers to, to the left on your screen with three fingers. And so I'm going to try to find my music through here. It doesn't always want to focus sometimes, so sometimes I'd put the focus back where I want it. That's just a bug thing. One of many minor bugs in iOS 7.1 and voiceover. There it is, music. Okay, so now when I hear music, now that it's selected, now that my focus is on there, I can double tap anywhere on the screen. And since my focus right now is on music, it'll bring up my music app. So I'm going to bring it up. For some reason my volume turned down again. Not sure why. Okay. Alright. So there's my music app. I think I have a, a particular piece up right now. So, I know, so, again, just from experience, I know that my title and such are going to be close to the bottom of the screen. So I'm going to put my finger here and try to have it read out to me. So it's reading Dodge for Strings, right? A famous Barber piece. Um, and so 
well, if I want to play it, what do I do? So I'm going to try to find the play button. I know, again, from experience, that my play button is near the uh, bottom of the screen, near bottom center, so I'm going to try to find it with my finger. Oh, I guess it, it wasn't on the, on the main screen. It was on uh, my list. So let me find... I'm going to go... Find that Adagio for string. Okay, I found it. So I'm going to double tap it, and it will play on its own. It focuses on back. So it's going to start playing that. You notice when it said back button, it focuses on that upper left corner where you can go back to the previous screen. Uh, when you go to another screen, it usually goes up to the upper left and focuses on whatever's on the upper left visually of the screen. So what if I want to pause this? So again, I know my pause is near the bottom center of the screen. So yep, I found it, right? And so what do I do? Instead of single tapping with voiceover to activate an item, you double tap. Pretty well always. So I'm going to double tap and I'm going to pause this. Okay. So then when I pause it, it, it said it stopped the track and it said play because the button changed from a pause button to a play button. So it reads a button when it changes. All right, so I'm going to uh, tab over to the next track button. The little, you know, the arrows, two arrows forward there, visually. Next track. Next track. I'm going to double tap double it tap to activate it. And play. Next track. Button. Double tap and hold to fast forward. It also says double tap and hold to fast forward. That's another one of those hints, right? Exactly. So I can either double tap it to go to the next track or double uh, tap and hold to uh, fast forward. So I'm going to go to the next track. Next track. Again, I type tap anywhere on the screen. So I'm going to try to see what the title of this track is again. Jackie Velasquez, a door, crystal clear. Double Jackie tap Velasquez, a door, from the album Crystal Clear. And I'm going to play this. Volume. Six, play. Uh, it's, yeah, it's on the volume there. So I'm going to play it. Pause. And you notice it changed to a pause button, and it told me that too. Nice little piece of music there. Some of you might recognize it. Okay, before I get in trouble for rebroadcasting this or sharing this, I'm going to pause it. Copyright and all. See, I couldn't exactly find the pause button just then, so I just did a left swipe to figure out where I was, and right swiped because I knew the pause button was right to the right of the go back a track button, right? So now I'm going to pause this. All right, excellent. So I think that's pretty well how voiceover works. There are some other cool little features. You can certainly increase the speed of the speech, which a lot of blind folks like because we're used to hearing things very quickly, and it comes closer to uh, the visual equivalent of reading rapidly. Uh, however, there are some cool other languages you can put on here. Uh, you not only have American English, but let me, uh, now, in order to change my language settings, I'm going to move my finger across the screen like this, like a wheel, to find what, where it's, what, until it says languages. Language. So it said language. Now I'm going to swipe down with this finger on the screen to change languages. So you notice it said British English. So if I move around the screen, you can hear it speaking British English with a male voice. Volume, 69%, adjustable. Swipe up or down with one finger to adjust the value. So this is, you know, if you're in Britain, you might want a British voice. Play, button. Play. Previous track, button. Double tap and hold to rewind. So we got that. And you also have... Australian English. Australian English. Next track, button. Double tap and hold to fast forward. Track position, 41.1 seconds, of, 4 minutes, 12 seconds, adjustable. Swipe up or down with one finger to adjust the value. 15.9 seconds, of, 4 minutes, Jesse Villasquid, play, button, Irish English. So Irish English? Volume, 69%, adjustable. Swipe up or down with one finger to adjust the value. And? 59%, 69%, Jesse Villasquid, South African English. South African English. Volume, 69%, adjustable. Swipe up or down with one finger to adjust the value. Right, and so you've got your hints and stuff like that, right? Um, so that's another fun thing. And um, also, a lot of totally blind people in particular, in order to conserve battery because they don't need the screen, just turn the screen completely off. And that's another feature of voiceover. So you, to do that, you triple tap on the screen with three fingers. So I'm going to do that. 
It says screen curtain on. I'm going to change this back to normal English. 59%. Ah, stay weak. There you go. Ah. Oh, see, I've got Italian on there too. That's when I want to read um, Latin, sort of, <laughs> aloud, which sort of works, sort of doesn't, because you have the Italian accent that gets in there, but it comes closest, I think. And Elenica, modern Greek, which I use for ancient texts, or typing Greek. Language. So you. there's my English. English, right? And so notice my screen is now off. When I triple tapped on the screen, my screen is now off. But yet, Jesse Velasquez, adore. Crystal clear. Double tap to show rating. I'm still able to hear what's on the screen when I move around the screen. All the gestures are the same and all that. And so, um, again, blind folks, especially totally blind folks, a lot of times will turn off their screen to preserve battery power. Because again, they don't really need the screen. Because I have partial vision, I do use the screen. So most of the time I have it on. But if I'm, you know, 20% of battery remaining, you know, that is, I turn it on to conserve battery. Um, screen curtain off. So I just turn the screen curtain off, and you see the screen's back on again when I triple tapped on the screen. This is just on voiceover, so you can't do anything like that if you have voiceover turned off on your iPhone. Now, some of you may remember I, I uh, did a really kind of funny April Fool's joke on my uh, mom uh, a couple uh, week ago or so now, you yeah. know where I basically turned my speech on, voiceover on, and I turned it to Italian, so it was reading all kinds of English in an Italian accent. And I turned on the screen curtain. So, you know, she really didn't know a lot about voiceover, or about screen curtain or anything like that, turning the screen off or anything like that. And so she gets up the next morning and she's like, what's happened to my phone? So, you know, again, feel free to steal, <coughs> borrow that if you know how to use voiceover or, or whatever now for next April Fool's Day. Um, and there was another thing I was going to mention, and I completely spaced it all of a sudden. Um, right. So, yeah, that's the, until I think of it, that's basically how voiceover works. Um, if you have any questions, just let me know, but that's how a blind person can, uh, can use an iPhone. So there you are, and let me, as I go ahead and stop this thing, let me see if I can think of what I was going to say in the meantime. Oh, yes, I, I know what I was going to say. This is a really amateurish podcast, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about this. I'm not good at video editing or anything. I have no idea how to do a lot of that stuff. So I'm kind of doing this on the fly. Um, if you really want to use a an iPhone, how a blind person would use it, turn on voiceover and turn off the screen, like I did. And try to operate your iPhone as I was doing without the screen. Then you'll get a really good sense. You know, it's just an experiment. You can turn it off really easily. Um, you know, turn it on, turn it off, and, and, and see see what it uh, what it feels like to operate your iPhone. Now, if you do that, if you're a sighted person, you're going to find out very quickly that some of your apps, if not many of them that you use, are not going to be accessible with, vo with voiceover. Either completely inaccessible, or very much inaccessible, or somewhat inaccessible. Or maybe completely accessible on the rare occasion, right? And you've probably heard me on Twitter, if you follow me there, complaining about that, or on Facebook. Um, many apps still have not been made accessible. In other words, they are not designed so that VoiceOver can read them. Um, that's just not the default way people design apps, unfortunately. Now, some, some app makers are really good at it and others aren't. Um, and some are improving and others are going backwards, right? And, you know, as they update. So that's just kind of a quick little aside to kind of explain what I mean when I say something is inaccessible or an app is inaccessible. I'm talking about it's not uh, the fact that it's not designed to work with VoiceOver. All right. So again, I just said screen dimmed. It tells you when your screen dims and when it locks, right? Um, any of you have any questions? As usual, just go ahead and uh, um, send me a tweet or comment on this video, if you would, or, or just, you know, hit me up on Facebook, if you're on my Facebook, and I will try to answer any questions you have. Um, I will get to any other questions you had from the previous podcast, in, or vodcast, whatever you want to call it, in the next one, I assure you. Uh, but for now, I will uh, go ahead and sign off of here, and uh, talk to you next time. I hope you found this podcast informative and insightful. Talk to you all later.